Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to bonds, specifically highlighting some of their key features. So look, bonds at the end of the day are a way through which corporations and sometimes even governments borrow money. So consider this, imagine that there's a corporation and it's looking to borrow some money. So we'll call it a borrower. And so it goes to potential lenders. You can think of these as investors, maybe individuals like you and I, sometimes accredited investors or rich individuals, sometimes even institutions, and they have the capital to lend to this corporation. And so these lenders will essentially lend some money to the corporation and the corporation in turn promises to make some payments. Now as a lender, what you care about is what exactly is the amount of payments that you are going to receive from the borrower. And that essentially is spelled out by the bond. So bond specifically spells out what exactly are the payments that the investors or the lenders are going to receive. So there are three main things that help the lenders understand what exactly is the amount of payments that they are going to receive and when. The first thing is what is referred to as the face value of the bond. And this for most corporations, especially in the US, is equal to $1,000. Now, don't pay a lot of attention to what exactly this means right now. I will explain in a bit the role that this face value of a bond plays in determining the magnitude and the timing of the cash flows that these investors or lenders receive. So bear with me. Now, the other thing that is specified in a bond is the coupon rate. And at a very high level, you can think of this as the interest rate, as the interest rate that the corporation is promising to pay to the investors or the lenders. So let's suppose this is 8%. What this means is that it will pay 8% of the 1,000. And so this is important. The coupon rate and the face value combined determine the magnitude of what are referred to as the coupon payments, or you can also think of them as the interest payments. And so coupon payments is equal to coupon rate, which I'm abbreviating as CR, times FV, which is face value, which is 1,000 here. And so 8% times the $1,000, which means $80. And then the other thing that is very, very important on the bond is its date of maturity. So let's suppose that on the day that the firm is issuing the bond on on the day that the firm is borrowing money from the investors, the date is let's suppose January 1st, 2022. And let's further suppose that the bond specifies that the date of maturity is January 1st, 2032. What that really means is that the firm is taking a 10 year loan because it's going from January 1st, 2022 to January 1st, 2032. It's a 10 year loan. So the bond is going to mature in 10 years. So the date of maturity and the date of issuance combined helps us determine the total number of time period for which the firm is borrowing the money, which in this case is 10 years, 10 years. And so if you were so inclined as to look at the timing of the cash flows that these investors will receive, then this is what it looks like. Basically, the corporation is saying that, look, I'm going to make a payment of $80 at the end of every year for the next 10 years. So it's a 10 year loan. And here's where the face value comes in. Also, at the end of the 10 years, which is when the bond matures, the people or the investors who are holding the bonds will also receive the face value of the bond, which is $1,000. So this in a nutshell is what bonds are all about. Again, there are three main things, the face value, the coupon rate, and the date of maturity. These three things combined help determine what the holder of a bond is going to receive in terms of coupon payments or the interest payments and also what the holder of the bond is going to receive when the bond matures. There are a few important things that you must keep in mind when you are thinking about bonds. The first is this. Once the firm has issued the bond, the face value, the coupon rate, these are fixed. 
So anyone who's holding the bond will get the same coupon payment. The coupon payments do not change. This is very, very important. Investors or the lenders who originally lend money to the corporation, they may not necessarily want to hold on to the bond that they have. So they can sell their bond to other people. In fact, this is exactly what happens in a bond market where people buy and sell bonds. Now, we will talk separately about what determines the prices of those bonds. That's a separate subject. But the point that I'm trying to make is that regardless of who holds the bonds, the payments that that individual will receive will be the same because they will be dictated by the face value and the coupon rate of the bond. And the other thing is this, this over time, the time to maturity declines. What that means is that if there was some individual or some institution that lent the money to the corporation on January 1st, 2022, decided to hold on to the bond, maybe received the first $80 payment and then said, eh, you know what? I don't want to keep this bond. I want to sell it. So that person who now holds the bond will only be receiving payments for the next nine years and then the face value. So the time to maturity of the bond has declined. And as you will see in subsequent videos, this can have implication towards how much you're willing to pay or what the price of the bond is at a particular point in time. So to reinforce these points, consider Apple. So what I'm showing you are the different bonds that Apple has issued and which are currently outstanding, which means that these are the different bonds that investors are holding on to at this point. They haven't matured. And what you'll see is that against each issue that Apple has made, there's a bunch of information that is given, but one key thing that is given here is the coupon. This is the coupon rate and then the time to maturity. And if I click on this bond issue to get more details, I'm showing you a snapshot of what will pop up. And uh, as you can see, one important date that is given here is the offering date and then the dated date. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the difference between the two, but for our purposes, if you take a look at dated date, that's August 8th, 2022, and the maturity date is August 8th, 2029. Put simply, when Apple issued this bond, it was looking to borrow money for a period of seven years, going from 2022 to 2029. Moreover, the coupon payment of 3.25% means that anyone who's holding the bond is going to receive 3.25% of the face value, which is $1,000, so $32.50. Now, if this were to be paid out annually, this means that at the end of each year, the holder of the bond is going to receive $32.50. In reality, most U.S. corporations make their payments on a semi-annual basis, which means that every six months, investors receive half the annual coupon payments. So 16.25 for the first six months and another 16.25 for the next six months. Now, an important question to ask is that what determines the price of the bond? Or even at the time of issuing the bond, how much are the lenders willing to lend to the corporation? If I take you back to this timeline, it's one thing to say that, okay, the corporation is going to make payments of $80, $80, and then $1,000 at the end of the 10 years. But how do we know how much are the investors willing to lend at this point in order to receive those payments? Is it $1,000? Is it $900? Is it $1,050? So that is something that we will talk about in subsequent videos. But notice here when I was showing you information for Apple, you see something like price and then the yield, which is also short for yield to maturity. Turns out yield to maturity ultimately impacts the price, the price of the bond. We'll talk about this in a separate video.